This talk is on double lumen in the tracheal tubes, and hopefully this talk will make the use of these tubes ridiculously simple. I'm an anesthesiologist and have been practicing in Hammond, Louisiana for 30 years, and obviously more and more patients are coming through needing thoracotomies. It can be intensely frustrating when your double lumen tube doesn't work perfectly. Uh, basically, there are two types of endobronchial tubes that we currently use, a right-sided as well as a left-sided endobronchial tube. For all practical purposes, you just need to use a left endobronchial tube. This is what is being taught in the residency programs. Here's a view of the uh, right-sided endobronchial tube. It has a longer cuff and has a Murphy's eye. And uh, because of the short segment of the take off of the right upper lobe. If this is not perfectly placed, you're gonna have problems uh, with this tube. Therefore, most, uh, most doctors now are using exclusively uh, the left and the bronchial tube, which here's a picture of that. Much smaller cuff, and it has uh, a nice angle where it fits comfortably in the longer left bronchus. Um, with less chance of moving too far distally. Here are the two tubes next to each other. They both have tracheal cuffs. Always the tracheal port comes off medially here. And then here's the regular round left and the bronchial cuff that we use often. When doing this, we like to uh, place the tube in the trachea and make sure that we then pass a bronchoscope through the endobronchial lumen. Uh, this is again a left-sided tube. It doesn't make any difference if you're doing a left chest or right chest. Doesn't make any difference for what side they're doing or what side they want up. This tube works for all procedures, including the, the dreaded left pneumonectomy. You just have to pull the tube back a little bit before you cross clamp across it. That's an incredibly unusual operation for our hospital. You might get one of those every five years. It's usually a little back to me. Are usually doing something where you just need the lung down for a little bit. But anyway, go down the left in the bronchial lumen, visualize the trachea carina, and from that point you can see clearly that the endobronchial and the fiber optic scope needs to go down the left. Visualize the bronchoscope moving down the left. When you see that then you can thread your left and the bronchial tube down the left side. If you advance the bronchoscope into the left side, then you can just thread it down. It almost always easily follows. Here you can see um, we actually have started to advance the tube, pull back the bronchoscope just a little bit, but be careful because if you pull it back too far, you can cause the tube to go somewhere else. But anyway, this is a perfectly placed left in the bronchial tube. It's right where it needs to be. You can ventilate through the tracheal port. You can ventilate this way. If you want to ventilate the left, you do that. If you want to ventilate the right, go through the tracheal port. Always pass the bronchoscope through the tracheal port when it's seated properly. This way you can visualize the carina nicely. You can see just a little bit of this pillow of the uh, and the bronchial balloon just distal to the carina and uh, be prepared that when you move the patient uh, into the lateral position that this can move so if you have to move your tube uh, deflate both cuffs so that you don't cause any tracheal injury um, and of course you need less volume it's a smaller tube um, but this is a perfectly placed tube and, and it can also be f too far down it can move so you really need to confirm it uh, after you move and again uh, this tube has moved just a bit and so it's now herniated above the carina and you're not going to successfully ventilate the left side through the endobronchial port you'll the right side will receive some ventilation here's a tube which has been advanced too far perhaps during the move and you're really only going to ventilate just the left lower lobe you're going to have real high peak inspiratory pressures you cannot ventilate through the tracheal port because it's down the left end the bronchial side this tube has been pulled back 
and here it is still too far down uh, you're ventilating primarily you can ventilate both sides here but your tracheal port is really past the carina so when you pass your bronchoscope down you'll be able to see that here is a an example of a tube which is herniated out completely and uh, you can't ventilate exclusively either side particularly if you've tried to ventilate through the tracheal port you're going to get real high peaks in, peak inspiratory pressures um, if you're trying to ventilate uh, just the left side there'll be air moving through here ventilating ventilating the right side and you'll have a surgeon who will uh, <clears throat> not be happy keep the bronchoscope in the room because you will uh, confirm the placement and once it's confirmed then you're you're good to go here's another example of a tube which has come out it's a left-sided tube come out too far and you really just need to let the tube let both cuffs down and uh, advance the tube in the very rare instances where you actually want to use the right sided endobronchial tube you can do like this illustration shows go down the endobronchial port visualize the carina make sure that the bronchoscope moves into the right uh, bronchus and then when you see that then you can actually thread the uh, tube over that way but because this is such a short segment before the takeoff of the right upper lobe it's very easy to either block this lobe completely so then you're ventilating only two so you'll see uh, perfect placement and you'll see some minor movements which cause sometimes major problems um, in this setting you can start to advance it and here we're actually in good shape this is a properly placed right in the bronchial tube there's a murphy's eye here so you're ventilating the right upper lobe if you want to if you want to ventilate just the right side then ventilate through the endobronchial port you're ventilating all three lobes here you can confirm its placement by going down the tracheal port seeing the carina and seeing that balloon just distal to the carina. If you are doing a left-sided case, you can uh, ventilate through this port. It's just much more difficult to get this side correct. As a matter of fact, most of the residents who have come out of their residency state they've never inserted a right-sided in the bronchial tube. Here's a right-sided endobronchial tube which has gone down too far and it is completely blocking the right upper lobe. So now you're ventilating really just the left middle, I mean the right middle and right lower. And you can see this is a well-placed left endobronchial tube and it's perfectly placed. You can ventilate everything. If you're ventilating the left lung, you ventilate through the left endobronchus. If you're ventilating through the right lung, you ventilate through the tracheal port, and uh, if you're ready to ventilate both, then ventilate through both. In the very rare instances that you're doing a left pneumonectomy where the surgeon's going to cut across here right before he does so, all you have to do is pull this back just a little bit and let him clamp. It's really very unusual in most facilities to, to see that big of an operation, but that might be the only time you'd really want to put a right-sided tube in. Here's an example of just to show you that if you're not careful this is a left-sided tube you can see it's small and round it's not a right-sided tube but once you get it in place if there's a lot of twisting of movements and you get disoriented with your bronchoscope that left-sided and the bronchial tube can go down the right side and then everything's backwards. Here's the tracheal lumen laterally and so uh, you'll have high peak inspiratory pressures here as well and it's um, you can't go by the appearance of the tube at the mouth because you can twist it once the cuff is up you really need to confirm it properly to make sure that you're in good shape and if you do all those things um, you'll uh, you'll be happy and the case will go well and you can do more important things and get out of the operating room. Thank you. Additional information of note is that really uh, the most common size 
uh, in the bronchial tube you'll use is that left 37, which is appropriate for most adults. If you have a smaller adult, particularly a smaller female, a left 35 would probably be more appropriate in a larger male. Uh, a left 39. So if you keep mostly left 37s, you'll be in good shape with a few 35s and a few 39s for the uh, larger and smaller patients.